how about you take a few seconds, shake hands with those sitting next to you and get to know each other by name, how about that? Just get to know someone else by name, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm gonna test you after this. Do you know the name of the next person next to you? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Jama'a. You can invite him for dinner tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, baraka nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, tasliman kathira, thumma ma ba'd. Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala fi kitab al-Qana'ati wal-Afaf, the chapter of contentment and self-sufficiency, قال عن حديث حكيم بن حزام رضي الله تعالى عنه حكيم بن حزام رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اليد العليا خير من يد السفلى وابدأ بمن تعول وخير الصدقة عن ظهر غنى ومن يستعفف يعفه الله ومن يستغني يغنه الله See this beautiful word of the Prophet وسلم, even if you don't understand Arabic, you can see how succinct they are, and short, and profound, and each sentence is just maybe two, three words. But each one of them is so powerful in terms of the meaning of living as a life of self-sufficiency, and this kind of independence from other people. So let's see what the hadith says here. Qala وسلم, اليد العليا خير من اليد السفلى the upper hand is always better than the lower hand. In terms of what? What is he talking about here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What do you guys think? About what? Charity. The one who gives versus the one who takes, receives. Which one is better? Do you want to be on the receiving end or the giving end? Some people, they say, I don't care, man. <laughs> Whatever comes, Bismillah, I'll take it, right? SubhanAllah, some people in this culture of greed, they have no limits. So it doesn't matter where it's coming from. If it's free money, I'll take it. Not just free money, subhanAllah, their heart pursues that, that they even go and they ask for it. And when they get it, of course, yani, they're receiving hand. Okay, some, some might, somebody might be yani, smart enough to say, Shaykh, alhamdulillah, there's no upper hand, there's no lower hand these days. All goes digital, alhamdulillah, rabbi. So it doesn't matter if I just have, you know, wire transfer directly or drafts from the, that doesn't count as well, right? No, it does. It's not really about the hand. It's about in which position are you? Are you in the receiving end or the giving end? That's, that's what it meant. So always try to be among those who give versus those who actually who take and receive. He said, So the upper hand is better than the lower hand. That doesn't mean you're not allowed to ask if you need to. Allah, if somebody is in dire necessity and they ask for help, it's okay. If somebody needs to take a loan and they go and borrow money from somebody, that's okay. So there are certain circumstances that we can sort of exempt from this. But still, always try to be among those who are in the, in the, in the giving end. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does it require from you to be on the giving end all the time? What do you guys think? To be in a position to give, which means? Means to be rich, or at least to be in a position, put yourself in circumstances that would allow you to be earning, alhamdulillah, enough to give. Which means, poor, being poor, or poverty in itself, is not a virtue. Some people, they promote poverty as a virtue, like saying, alhamdulillah, to be poor is better than being rich. Who said that? Yachayn Nabi Wasallam used to ask Allah's protection from, from poverty. A'udhu billahi, say A'udhu billahi, say, say A'udhu billahi min al-faqr, say ask Allah to, be, to have refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from poverty. So the Prophet used to ask for to protection from poverty, it's not virtue by itself. So you need to put yourself in a position where you can earn so you can give. Obviously, in the process, don't forget where you're getting your money from, and where you put it. At the same time, don't forget about the hukuk and the rights of others, in terms of time, in terms of you know, time management and so on. So that's the first thing. اليد العلا خير من اليد السفلى The upper hand is better than the lower hand. Then he said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَبْدَأْ بِمَنْ تَعُولْ It's a very profound statement for those who work so hard for their money. If Allah subhanahu blessed you with wealth, you work so hard so you can be among those who give, and you became rich, 
who are those people who are most entitled to that money in terms of, you know, being among the first to receive that virtue of this wealth? Who are they, Jama'ah? Your family. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said here, وَبْدَأْ بِمَنْ تَعُولُ Start with those who are dependent on you. And who are these people dependent on you? Mean, meaning your family, your spouse, your children, your parents. This is the closest circle to you. If there is anybody else that you owe them that money, then obviously they are count as well because that's sustaining their livelihood and so forth. So وَبْدَأْ بِمَنْ تَعُولُ Because some people, when they, give, when they give charity, mashallah, what do they do? They want to be like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. So his wife was saving for the summer trip, mashallah. And then the other day she comes to check how much we have. Bismillah rahman rahim. Where's the money? Oh, I give it fi sabilillah. And she goes, are you out of your mind? No, no, no. This is, you're going to get this in al-jannah, inshallah ta'ala. How is al-jannah better for you? You know, may Allah bless you, bless your wealth and your family. And this is good, no, no doubt. But that's not fair. You're not going to take the principal money and give it out as charity. Because the next statement from the Prophet Sallallahu he reminds us, he says about this particular issue, he says, وَخَيْرُ الصَّدَقَةِ عَنْ ظَهْرِ غِنَى The best charity you give is from the surplus. What does that mean? And if you have wealth, alhamdulillah, sufficient for your family, and you have excess money right now. From that excess money, that's what you give. Don't go to the basics that you need for your family and you give it away as charity. And many people, they would say, Alhamdulillah, I put my trust in Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah will give back. That is true, but yeah, you're not Abu Bakr Siddiq or Umar. Yani. And you need to be careful that when you do so, you calculate. Things back then were different than today. The way we earn is different. Our expenses are different. Our livelihood is, is different. So make sure to make it a calculated way of giving that charity. But if someone, mashallah, is so confident that alhamdulillah money is coming anyway, I had a good deal that I did, for example, the other day, so I'm sure that's going to come. And you decide to give this ahead as a paid forward, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you. But make sure, as the Prophet says, the best charity is the one that you give out of your surplus money, an ghina, yani when you're rich. And some people, subhanallah, Allah bless them with so much wealth and money. And here's the thing, so the irony, the more money we have, the less likely we will give. Why? Because when you see it growing big, subhanAllah, it becomes so depressing to see all this money go straight out in charity. Yani. Versus if you have only two dollars. Like given one dollar, whatever, alhamdulillah. But you have only two dollars. Who cares, man? Alhamdulillah, we'll be okay. So that's why the Prophet said, when you have wealth, give. Because there is less likely, less motive to give at that time for many, many people. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala salawatullahi wa sallam وَمَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْ يُعْفُهُ اللَّهِ Now he's speaking to those who are on the receiving end. He says, if you are on the receiving end, he says, وَمَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْ يُعْفُهُ اللَّهِ And the one who seeks uh, uh, self-sufficiency or to save their, their, themselves from this, from this embarrassment or bashfulness or situation or a moment of weakness to be in that position, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ifa. The word speaks about chastity or saving يعني, your face in front of the people. Like if you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you. And then he says, وَمَنْ يَسْتَغْنِ يُغْنِهُ اللَّهِ And whoever يَسْتَغْنِ Which means always be confident and put trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have that self-sufficiency and independence from people, Allah will provide for them. وَمَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْ And you have the عِفَّةِ And not asking people for their wealth. And you being content with what you have, these are two qualities very important. You don't ask, at the same time you're content. Because some people don't ask, because they're shy, they want to save their face from the people. But subhanAllah, they're not happy with what they have. They're not content. So they become, you know, bitter at some point. And other people, subhanAllah, they're, you know, they're content in their hearts with what they have for Allah but still they have, you know, they don't mind it. You know, raking money from all over the place. So make sure that you have this, these two qualities. You have the ifa that alhamdulillah mean you try to save your face from being among those who are asked. And also at the same time making sure that you're content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with. So this hadith is about al-qana'at wal-afaf. Miscontentment and self-sufficiency. May Allah make us among those who are self-sufficient, ya Rabbil Alameen. And those who are content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them, ya Allah. Wallah alam. Any question, Jumaan? Yes.
This is about begging, which means when you ask people for money, not borrowing money. But still, though, it counts as one. Well. Okay, being in a position to give versus to, you know, to borrow, it's not the same. No. That's true. Credit. Not credit card. Like he pays, he, he gets something to be paid later. So he said, okay, I'll get it from you, I'll pay you later. But he's expecting, for example, war spoils to come, so his share is going to come later, for instance. Or someone needs to pay him something and so forth. So that's why the Prophet Sallallahu would actually wait, probably would do make these transactions for a lot of time. Sometimes he would just uh, for a, a collateral with somebody until yani, he, full, he finishes that, that transaction and so forth. Wallahu a'am. Now, yes. Hmm. Yeah, that's why we, so the question, unless you ask somebody, how people would know that you're in need? They will not know anything about you. Well, that's what Allah describes in the Quran about those people who are masakeen. They don't ask people out of bashfulness and shyness. Basically, you think that they're rich because they're not asking. So some people, that you overlook them because they have so much dignity, alhamdulillah, and pride that they're not willing to ask anybody. Except for those who know them closely, they recognize their need. So if you're in need, doesn't mean you can... can is it okay for you to ask? Yeah. It's okay. We said you can ask, but try your best Keep yourself in a position that you don't need you know, to ask anybody. Wallah. But if you had to, you had to. Wallah. Now, that's why even in the Quran, if you ask, if you borrow money from somebody, document that. Now. Yes. Mm. So if you have your child and he's already an adult, got married, have children. But his situation, his financial situation is not that great. Are you allowed to give your child some money as a, as a form of charity? Would that count as a charity, Jama'ah? Your child is an adult. He's 30, 40, for example, and he has kids. But his financial situation is bad. Are you allowed to give your child money and that counts as charity? The answer is yes. Now the young guy goes, Alhamdulillah, where's my dad? <laughs> Don't do that. But we're saying it is allowed for you to give charity to your children. That's fine. Yani. Now, zakah, here's the thing. Zakah, if the, your children are young, you cannot give them zakah because that's your duty to take care of them. But if they're adult, you're no longer responsible for them financially. So can you give your child a zakah? The answer is yes. But can your child give you zakah no matter how old you are? Nope. They don't give you zakah. Can, you give them, can they give you charity? Well, it doesn't count as charity. Because that's an obligation to take care of your parents financially. Unless, of course, the parents, yani, with all due respect, sometimes, you know, they take too much of, of, their, of their children's money and wealth because they feel entitled to it. Like, hey, we want to go to Pakistan, for example, uh, this summer. Okay, bismillah, here you go. Okay, uh, spring break is coming. Let's go to Pakistan again. And then, come on, Ajama, take it easy. <laughs> so you're going to have to be reasonable as well when you ask for your children's wealth. Wallah. Now, yes. Both zakah and sadaqah. Nah, wallah. That's it. Subhanakallah, bhamdik, ashrat, astafirka, tubarik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.